Labour leader Anthony Albanese has been busily reshuffling his team in anticipation of an election, perhaps later this year. Secret footage smuggled out of Labour Party headquarters has been handed exclusively to outsiders, capturing the final moments of that tense shadow cabinet reshuffle meeting. Much has been written about the need for Albo to lift his game with reports that Albanese is just one slip away from meeting his Karl Rove moment, a reference and comparison to the final nail that sealed the coffin over the leadership career of the hapless Kim Beasley. When he mixed up the grieving TV presenter Rove McManus with White House strategist Karl Rove. Could happen to anyone, I guess. Beasley was toast, and 12 months later, Kevin Rudd became our Prime Minister. Politics can be brutal, and were it not for Kevin Rudd's leadership rules, Albo would now be being put out to pasture after an extremely unimpressive 20 months as leader. A couple of points are worth making. Firstly, as I wrote in my weekly column in the Australian Financial Review yesterday, chess aficionados would probably call this the Albo's gambit cunningly moving one pawn to the middle of the board, then sacrificing the adjacent pawn to gain control of the centre. In this case, Albo sacrifices the lefty climate change-obsessed alarmist Mark Butler in order to move the energy and environment portfolio more to the centre by appointing the so-called moderate Chris Bowen. I'm sure it looked very good on paper. Alas, I'm not sure Albo has actually bothered to think that many moves ahead. The reshuffle clearly reeks of desperation. You can smell the fear in the air. Albo knows full well that climate change alarmism is the albatross around his neck, but he doesn't have the faintest clue what to do about it. The only, and I repeat, the only move that would have achieved his goal would have been to move Joel Fitzgibbon into that critical position. In that one swift move, Albo would have made it clear to the electorate that Labor can still be serious about blue-collar jobs and cheap energy. Sure, the loonies would have screamed and he would have had a fight on his own in his own electorate against the Greens, but he's going to have that anyway. Uh, but it would have given him a, one last shot at becoming Prime Minister, but that option has now all but closed. The move was obviously a humiliating loss for Mark Butler, being punted from his beloved climate portfolio. He's a full-blown climate cultist, so no doubt it won't be long before we start hearing great reset and build back better garbage from Mark Butler about using the levers of the COVID pandemic to heal the planet from catastrophic climate change. If, um, if we look at the planet as if uh, it were a patient, uh, we can see that our activities have been damaging her immune system and she has been struggling to function and thrive due to the strain we have put on her vital organs. Charles is clearly as mad as a cut snake and a grave threat to our constitutional monarchy, but I suspect we'll be hearing similar claptrap from the new shadow health minister who will easily slide from climate alarmism to COVID slash climate alarmism. But back to Albo's gambit ditching Mark Butler in order to put Chris Bowen at the centre of the board. Now, a cynic might be somewhat puzzled by that move. You see, if you look at his track record, Chris Bowen is either one of the biggest liabilities a Labour leader can have or an undercover agent secretly working for the Libs. Consider 2008 when Kevin Rudd was riding high in the polls, the great new hope of Labour, the country loved him, everything was going swimmingly until... Assistant Treasurer Chris Bowen launched Grocery Watch. It was, to quote Phil Khoury, a disaster and became a laughing stock. The first chink in the mighty Kevin's impregnable armour. Once they start laughing at you, it's all over. As Rudd found out, he was gone within two years. Julia Gillard always struggled under the kind of veil of illegitimacy. But the biggest disaster that sealed her fate was the boats. Under Immigration Minister Chris Bowen, they just kept on coming. Remember Ray Hadley's brrr, brrr, brrr every five minutes? Then Chris Bowen launched the Malaysian Solution, a bizarre idea where for every 800 asylum seekers we shipped off to Malaysia, the Malaysians would send us 4,000 refugees. It was a disaster again, and within two years, 
Julia Gillard was gone. Chris Bowen then agitated for the return of Kevin Rudd. Kevin rewarded Chris by promoting him to treasurer, the shortest treasurer in our history. Within weeks, Rudd was gone again. Then came Chris Bowen's finest achievement. From 2013 to 2019, Bill Shorten's stocks just kept on rising higher and higher. Even the bookies were paying out on him. They presumed him to be the next Prime Minister of Australia. But just in the nick of time, super spy Chris Bowen worked his evil genius again with the single worst Labor policy in decades, the franking credits debacle designed to rip off self-funded retirees and older Australians. And then to really seal Shorten's fate, Bowen came up with the greatest political slogan of the modern era. If you don't like Labor's policies, don't vote for us. Well, within days, Shorten was cactus. The evil genius had struck again. <laughs> Rudd gone, Gillard gone, Rudd gone again, Shorten gone, and Albo's bound to be next. That's one hell of a record, Chris. Keep up the great work, mate.